Right now, the 2024 World Series of Bowling is well underway, and we had the first Animal Pattern TV Finals on Monday the 15th of April, with the Cheetah Championship stepladder taking place. The Cheetah Pattern is notoriously high scoring, and this year was no different, and the top five featured some new faces, with three of the players making their TV debut. But in this telecast, I think we might have seen one of the worst breaks ever, in PBA history, so I'm going to break down what happened and explain why I think this is one of the worst breaks we've seen on TV in quite some time. And also while we're here, I'm going to break down the other matches on the telecast and find out who took home the title. Now, this bad break took place in the first match of the telecast where five seed BJ Moore took on Anik Keplinger. It was a strong start for Keplinger who had the front four. BJ Moore wasn't too far behind as he went strike, nine spare, and then a double but in his fifth frame we come to the bad break or at least the first part of it he was absolutely flush in the pocket but left the solid eight but that wasn't all because there's more to this bad break than just leaving a solid eight fast forward to the eighth frame and keplinger had left a couple of nines and had gone high on one or two shots so although bj moore was down by 30 he still had a chance in this match he struck in the eighth to make it a double but in the ninth he left another solid eight pin and this was just another beautiful shot here from bj moore and it was on the exact same lane as the other eight pin and to me leaving two eight pins like this in the same match on the exact same lane is what makes this one such a bad break in my opinion bj moore bowled such a great game and even randy said it in the commentary that out of the two bowlers moore bowled the better game but Keplinger would advance after getting a mark in the ninth and 10th frames. But this is one of the problems with the cheetah oil pattern. Players have such an easy time getting to the pocket that essentially these matches just become a bit of a carry contest and BJ Moore, through no fault of his own, lost that contest. And what a horrible way for him to go out here. And like I said, two solid eight pins on the same lane in one match, which basically cost him the match makes this one of the worst breaks we've seen on TV in quite some time. But let me know what you think in the comment section below and we'll move on and have a look at what happened at the rest of the telecast. Match two saw another TV debut from the three seed Dio Bernard, a 20 year old two handed lefty. He was using the black pearl urethane and had a great look from the get go. Obviously as the only lefty on the show, if he gets lined up, then he's going to be pretty dangerous. But Keplinger seemed to have found some momentum as he had the first four strikes. But Bernard was in touch after getting a late seven pin to fall and followed this up with a very nice strike. In the fifth, Keplinger went quite high and left a nine pin. And towards the end of the match, Keplinger was either leaving a 10 pin or coming up high and leaving a four pin. But Bernard came up clutch striking in the seventh, eighth and ninth frames to take the lead. Keplinger had really been lofting it throughout the match, but he just lost his look as he went high again for yet another four pin, and this left Bernard to strike in the 10th to advance. Now on to match three, where we have our third and final TV debut in Mikey Slaybar, who put in a lovely strike to start the match off, but his next shot left a washout, and he said that he missed this one at the bottom, and perhaps this was just a little bit of adrenaline. And I believe this is the first shot that we've seen that's been less than a nine count. It's an open frame and on this pattern with how high it's scoring it is, it pretty much could be very costly at this point, especially when Bernard is putting in shots like that. And Mikey Slaybar just couldn't get going, leaving a couple of 10 pins and was in a big hole, but then left the 347 in frame seven. And that would pretty much do it for this match as Bernard would coast to the finish line to head to the title match to face the one seed Marshall Kent. Now, we all know we've seen Marshall Kent have his struggles on TV, but he did pick up a great win in February at the Illinois Classic. Kent is actually going with Reactive, the only guy on the telecast to do so, and I believe he was using a Game Breaker 5 here. It was an opening double for Kent. Bernard went strike and then nine spare after going high for a six pin, uh, but he did get back on track with a strike in the third. Kent's third frame, and this was a lot wider, and although it did make it back to the pocket, it left a 10 pin. His next shot just did not hook, and I'm not quite sure why, as it looked pretty good. He did almost trip the two pin out, but it did stand, and it would be back-to-back -back nine spares. 
Bernard then fired in two strikes to make it a 12 pin lead. And this is what happens when you get a two handed lefty and you put a urethane in his hand on a short pattern like the cheetah, they just become unstoppable. But that being said, Bernard has just put down so many fantastic shots and he's been on the money right from the get go. Bernard does strike again, but there's potentially a twist in this match as he leaves the big four on the left lane. And we did see earlier his ball start to overhook slightly, but this one just took off. So it's an open frame and Bernard's lead sits at just five pins and Kent is working on a strike. However, Kent cannot take advantage and this shot misses the head pin left and was not a good shot at all, but he does pick up the spare. His next shot on the left lane was much, much better and it did strike. Bernard struck himself after the open, but followed it up with a seven pin leave. So this one is still too close to call at this point, but Kent still can't get it going on the right lane and this one didn't pick up and he was quite fortunate to just leave a two pin. His 10th frame now and to me this just looked inside of target all the way and he left the 3610 which he did spare but now Bernard just needs a mark to win and he strikes to take home the 2024 Cheetah Championship. Kent had a few opportunities to really take control of this match and put the pressure on Bernard but just couldn't capitalize on these mistakes and the right lane gave him a lot of trouble but after that big fall from Bernard it looked like the match was going to swing in Kent's favour. Unfortunately for him it didn't work out that way and it was another TV finals that just all went wrong for him. There's no doubt we'll see more of Marshall Kent soon and he'll be hoping to recreate his success at the Illinois Classic Telecast but a big congratulations to Bernard who was rock solid on his TV debut and fully deserved the win here. And that is going to do it for today. Make sure to keep an eye out on my channel for more breakdown videos from the other events that are taking place in the World Series of Bowling. I hope you all enjoyed this quick breakdown of the Cheetah Telecast. And as always, if you have enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you would click the subscribe button below. That will do it for today. And as always, thank you bowling fans and see you all next time. Kimberly, his wife Tania, on the PWBA tour. Oh, I hate to see that. He felt ah, so good about it. Do that to me. No comment. I mean, it's just a crappy break. Period. It's perfect. And when he really needed it to stay in this, solid eight. That was mean. Let's go. God. Right now, there's a table for one. Are you kidding me? That eight impressive. is cruel, mean, and single. Two solid eights in this game for BJ Moore, both on the left lane.